So welcome to the photo gallery. We're here today to talk about lineages and I have three lineages on the wall. And first I'm gonna start by just saying um, how I got started doing lineages um, in the 70s. Of course, everybody was watching Roots. And um, at that time I asked my grandmother, you know, about her children. And um, she gave me the information and I wrote it down. Well, here, like what, 30 years later, I found the information and this year I did my lineage for my family, which is on this wall here. But I was really encouraged to do the lineage once I started doing the lineage for the Parks family. And um, Tamar's here today, but she brought the information to me, which covered the whole floor here when she brought it. And she said, oh, I need a family tree. And I was like, there's no way in the world we could do a family tree. She just, she had nine generations of people in her family. And so I, she gave me about a week and I created the lineage that's over here on the wall. And it's a color-coded lineage. So each person in her family can pick up their lineage from that top. Uh, piece. The top piece is like the main piece and James Park's uh, children are listed there so other children can pick up still using the top part of the lineage and each one of the children um, has a different uh, color. So she encouraged me to do my own lineage and this lineage um, kind of snowballed. It was like the snowball effect this lineage ended up going to, um, correct me if I'm wrong, it ended up going to Marymount College. It then left Marymount College and went to the Black Heritage Museum. Then after that, it went to the main library here in Arlington. All of the Central. All of the Central Library. And then after that, the resting place for James Parks went to the Arlington House. And so currently that top piece is at the Arlington House, along with the bus, because her aunt, Miss Flossie, made a bus of James Parks. So I encourage everyone to go to the Arlington House to see that lineage. Also, let me add that uh, Inez also is a Parks. And Inez, well, I have two descendants of James Parks here. So, um, <laughs> and um, so after I did this one, um, I took a break and then I said, I need to find another family that I can do a lineage for. And my girlfriend, Audrey Jones, um, I called her because they have seven people, children in their family. And, and that would be a good way to do another lineage, but show the different ways you can do a lineage. So behind me is the lineage for the Jones family. And that's a seven generation uh, lineage as well. And each one of their children has a block of their family. And so that's another way you can do a lineage. And um, the main piece is added to, each individual can take the main piece and the piece with their picture on it and start another uh, generation. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, question. How many lineages can you do? Because you said this was one lineage, and this was a different one. Right. If I'm correct, right? Right, right. It, you can do it for any family. But this is a different kind of lineage than that. Though. Yes, yeah. yes, okay. yes. Uh, that was nine generations. Okay, and this one is a different. Okay, seven. Gotcha. Yeah, okay. I had. She had more. She had more information, so I couldn't do it like that. And it's kind of set up that way. Excuse me, but this one is more individualized. So, on this picture here, the bottom row of people are their individual. Exactly. Oh, oh, right. Right. Oh, yes. Yes. 
and each one of them have their own family and so they have grandkids so that would be a good way to just add this piece and one of those pieces yeah so um and then i my lineage is over here where i put all my family's picture up like all of all of my family is I said, send me a picture. So I got a picture of everybody in my family uh, on this lineage. And this one is also a seven generation um, lineage as well, but it has all the pictures. Right. So I did another family tree for the Anderson family, which was my own way of doing a family tree with the names, giving the meaning of the names. And that one is straight over here. Um, it has, uh, all the family members' names up there, and um, the meaning of their names, uh, Bible verse, and um, it has a coat of arms. And it was really um, nice because Stephanie wanted a coat of arms, and so I Googled it, and I found a website that will give you your coat of arms. If you know that your family is from Germany or England or Scotland, um, unfortunately, they don't have any mm -hmm. African uh, mm -hmm. coat of arms, but that is something that you can use, um, like for your return addresses. You can have your coat of arms on there or your envelopes. You can use it for any kind of personal things, napkins, uh, what, whatever you can think of. You can always use your coat of arms. So that one is like one of my favorite ones because I people love to see their names up in lights so um that's a that's a good piece as well so oh, I'm, I'm just, oh okay I'm, on the um numbers that you sent out the, the invitation and all I noticed above they had like little symbols above the names is that the code of arms for that no no so some of them like for instance over here there were twins in the family and they might have like it's a set of twins in this family mm -hmm. and so it's symbols that represent different things like oh, okay. um divorce twins um i created a little symbol like if the, the two individuals aren't married but they have children oh, you know okay. that sort of thing so yeah it's just different symbols oh, okay. yeah that's, that's critical. Yeah, that's real. Yeah, yeah, especially when you're doing research, right. you need to know whether or not the individual two people were married, because if they remarry, then they might have other children, right. and then it com it becomes confusing, confusing. But I remember Tamar was saying in her family there was like five or six different people named James. Mm -hmm. The name, the name James, and the name Lawrence perpetuated itself throughout the, the generation. So everybody, you know, when they had a child, they, they named him James. Mm -hmm. so yeah, you you had to be like very that. careful yeah. when you did the research because you had to look carefully at the, the dates and then you had to look carefully at the parents um, to figure out where you were in the, the eight or nine generations that you were researching. Good point, yeah. So it's very important to be uh, kind of exact when you're doing this so that future generations can reflect back and say, okay, that makes sense, you know. Uh, but you know, a lot of times we as family members, we wanna be secretive about a lot of stuff that's going on in the family. But um, since I've been doing this, I realized that it's kind of important. And the reason it's important because of health reasons. Yeah, you, yeah. You need you need to really know um, your family and uh, different things that's going on with with health, um, and that is very important. Um, I was watching um, Henry Louis Gates, and um, I realized, and I hadn't thought about this, but when we were growing up, most of the people in here, we did photo albums. And they don't do photo, we don't do photo albums. All our pictures are on our phones now. And he was saying how important it is to have a family album because then you have the pictures of your ancestors or pictures of your family now. And for me, that rang a bell when I was trying to get pictures of my family. I went to my 
I, I went to the photo album, but now we don't have photo albums anymore. So that's one thing that I think that it's very important that we, we continue to do, even if um, you put a picture in there every once in a while, you need to make sure you have pictures in a photo album so that you can go and get that picture and show your children who this person was, even your father or your mother, your grandmother, they, because they don't know. They really um, don't know. One of the other things that's important too is that <clears throat> how we go back, since this went back to, uh, the Parks family went back to slavery time to um, the late 1700s, 18, early 1800s, um, we, we didn't have any of that. And what they did was, in a lot of cases, they would record the family in the Bible. Exactly. So it was so important exactly. for that information to be passed on to the other generations. And we find in a lot of cases that gets lost now. Um, yeah. Because people don't have the patience or, you know, oh, it's nothing. Or they don't and, know it. And yeah, and the reality of it is, is that there's a wealth of information in the Bibles because our people were very religious. They were spiritual people and that was their guiding force within the family. The other one that you could use um, was the obituaries. Yeah, that's what we was talking about that, the obituaries. Uh -huh. Same, yeah. Yeah. And I just went through some of ours and everybody that I thought was related to me, I just took them and put them on the side so I could start going through them. The other part of it is there are also going to be some surprises that you don't want to Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I get those down all the time. Every time I turn around when somebody dies, somebody pops up. You know, it's like, yeah, what? And it's been there for how many years? But it's all good. It's real life. Yeah, right, absolutely. right. Yes. So, I mean, anybody else have any more questions? I just thought I would do a little lecture to encourage people um, to do this and to let them know how important it is um, so that we as African Americans or even just families in general can have some kind of visual document. And I think this is a visual uh, way of showing your family off, you know, and it's also a great conversational piece. Yeah, you know, even if you have one piece hanging up, people will kind of gravitate to it to see, you know, to learn more about you. Uh, and I think it's just really important. Um, before I close, I'd just like to say I created for everybody today a little chart so you can start doing your um, lineage. And it also explains the pricing of each one of the lineages. Mm -hmm. And that way you will have an idea. And just to say in the end that when I do these lineages, it's based on uh, whatever I do, any calligraphy I do is based on word count. And so the names to me are like words. And so that's how I calculate how much each lineage is going to cost. Mm -hmm. um, and that means everybody's lineage is different because you might have 30 people in your family and tomorrow she had... 50, <laughs> 50, 60 people in her family. So, you know, people always say, well, how much is it? It's different. Right. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. different because it's based yeah, it's, on, yeah. yeah it's so based that was on. only the 50 or so that we included, you know, because when you look at the generations, like coming from Uncle Jim, Uncle Jim mm -hmm. was one of 11. Mm -hmm. yeah, and yeah. then he himself had 22 mm -hmm. children. Right. Mm -hmm. So when you start looking at, you know, how you're going to do the presentation of which, you know, Felicia and I, we went back and forth because we got to be very, it was overwhelming. Mm -hmm. It was, so much yeah. information. Mm -hmm. But when you look at a generation where they're 11 and then, you know, one of those, siblings, one of those children has 22 and you start counting down, You've got to figure out how you want to approach it and what's important. So we chose to actually just take it from um, Uncle Jim to my grandfather 
And then from my grandfather, his children, which would have been Inez's father, mm -hmm. and then um, my mother's father. Mm -hmm. okay. And so that's what we're showing here. But I mean, it was much more than 50 Yeah, that's people. what I was gonna say. I, that was my next question about that. How far do you go? I guess as far as you want to go, you can stop it because it would get to be overwhelming. Yeah, overwhelming. And what I also found out is um, you you need to do one side of your family at a time. Oh yeah, I would never try to. Yeah, do trying to put two people. Yeah, done, yeah. We just don't have the space. We don't have that. Uh huh. You know, with the pictures in it. But I just like to do my dad's side because right. I just don't know much about him. Right. Yeah. And so it's a great project, um, and it's very interesting. So I encourage uh, a lot of people or whoever watched this video to definitely get yourself a visual of your family. Uh, it's it's definitely a um, visual, it's a conversational piece, and it's just a great keepsake. It's, it's a great keepsake, yeah. One of the things also is uh, the resources that you will use to actually help you in collecting the information. And um, one of the most popular is um, Ancestry. Ancestry. Um, um, and there's a wealth of information yeah. in Ancestry, but um, don't be deceived because depending on um, where your ancestors came from, and unfortunately ours was in slavery, mm -hmm. and so that a lot of the records are missing or you know they're just not there. Mm -hmm. um, but some of the other resources that you can utilize would be the county courthouse, the courthouse, you can go to their records. Um, if they were a resident here in Virginia, mm -hmm. you can go down to the library in, in mm -hmm. uh, Richmond, mm -hmm. and they have an excellent genealogy mm -hmm. section there. Uh, you can go to the archives over in Washington, D.C., and of course, you can utilize those resources within the family, yeah. um, the, the, the Bible and the, the obituaries and things like that. You can utilize that. And the, and the, and the most important would be to tap into that older generation that you still have access to. Yeah, that's the sad part now, yeah, because all of the older generation are just... Yeah, they're slipping away. Yeah, they're, they're slipping, slipping away. away. And you also um, didn't mention, but the Mormons, yeah. that, that they, they have a good uh, resource as well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that Mormon site was excellent, because for my, for my great-grandfather, him having 22 children, it was, it was invaluable because in a lot of cases, you would find um, some of the kids, but you know, as, as black people during that time, um, in a lot of cases, we were considered chattel. Right. Um, and so pretty much dismissed, but in a lot of cases, you can go through like the Mormon site and you will find like for um, James and his first wife, you would find a child that was born, but then the child died. So they would have parts child with a date there. Oh, wow. And in some cases, you would find a name. So I was lucky enough to find out of um, the 22 children, I think we found something like um, 15 or 16 of them. Um, so, we, so we didn't find them all. But um, we did find a lot, and a lot of the babies they were, you know, they 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 were born and they may have only survived a month. So they'll say that they survived one month, but you had a name, and so that's why you have to go to all these different resources and figure out who and where, depending on how they wanted to capture the information about us as a people. Yeah, I think that uh, yeah, well. One of my cousins had done, I guess, the ancestry, whatever, dot com. So one night we were on a Zoom call, and we had one of the the babies, I'd say, at birth. Although he was given a name at birth, he was eventually adopted. Oh, okay. but his name popped up oh. on the chart. His name, and our cousin was asking, "Well, who is this? Who is this?" We knew exactly who it was, mm -hmm. and I just thought that was really weird. So 
so, but different things. But I haven't just done that yet, but I don't think I'll do it. What what happens is as you start going through this and you begin to accumulate so much information, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I think um, at one point I talked to uh, Felicia maybe a year out about doing it. And, exactly. and then, you know, I, I found myself so overwhelmed mm -hmm. at times where I had to step away from it. Or you become so engrossed in it where you um, would start working late, maybe two o'clock in the afternoon because I'm retired. Mm -hmm. And I found myself still at it at two o'clock the next morning. Because mm -hmm. that's, mm -hmm. how, that's how intense it can get when you start finding and you would have these aha, aha moments. I had, when I had an <laughs> aha moment yeah. because I never knew what my grandmother's name was. And I did a trial on Ancestry, and I put in my dad's name, and I was trying to find out his parents, and her name came up. It was like a chilling feeling, mm -hmm. you know. It was it was like oh hard, and now I know who Susan is, mm -hmm. <laughs> and that was her name, you know. And I I never knew that, and here it is, you know, fifty years later, and I'm just finding out what her name was. So it isn't invaluable too to to just once you do the research and you put it into a format where people can actually look at it and see it. Um, and you know, I remember we had we had the whole James Park exhibit up here for six months, and people would come and come, and and then you know most of the family now somebody has a copy of that in their house, right? Mm -hmm. You know, because they were so intrigued by the research. And especially, you know, carrying it further down in terms of capturing mm -hmm. their their family pieces and everything. So it's invaluable to that extent. Yeah. Um, and an another thing is, even if you start it, somebody else, maybe two generations later, will say, well, let me finish this. I want to, you know, it might not be anybody in your family right now who wants to do it. But if you just start it, then it will be there. For generations to come and if you don't find all the information they'll say well let me wonder why we can't find bill here let me find something else because by that time technology is like growing right. every exactly. single day mm -hmm. you know dna whatever it is right exactly yeah. you you'll be able to find um, a lot of people people that you know you have no clue who they are but uh, in the quote I use, you know, we, we're carrying all of these people inside of us. You know, we have them inside of us. Everybody who, who was in our family before, they're inside of us. So I think this is really um, something that people should try and, and do. And then you find out the people that you've been communicating with, like in school and everywhere, and all of a sudden, oh, I'm kidding you. <laughs> <laughs> Especially here yeah, in Green Valley, right? Yeah. 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 So, um, any more questions? Well, I thank all of you all for coming, and um, I'm going to give each one of you a lineage, and if you um, want to ask me questions on how to do it, um, it's pretty easy, but, you know, I'm here, and, and Tamar's here. I mean, she's, she's like the resource for people who need to do um, research, because she's been to all of these places and she knows where to find, you know, the information. So, thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs>